name is Brady, and I'm going to be sitting with you through the next uh, two and a half, three hours of Hellpoint. Um, a game of radically uh, varying quality from moment to moment that, on the whole, I think I kind of like. I like quite a bit, actually. Um, it is the first project from Cradle Games, a small indie team based out of Quebec, uh, that is comprised of, I think, some pretty seasoned individuals. I did a little more reading up on them, and, like, some of their their personnel have worked for pretty big AAA companies like uh, like Ubisoft and Beanox before. Uh, and they seem like pretty talented folks overall who've done a, a whole lot of meaningful work in and around the, the space. This game on the whole, as I said, is, is good. Um, boy oh boy, there's a lot to it, and a lot of small design decisions I'm not too keen on, but on the whole, pretty solid stuff. Now, when last we left off... Oh, it's the black hole hour. Check that out. Um, we were probably heading to... Uh, well, what's the best place to go? Um, Alma Mater, right? So, from the Celestial Workshop, we should be able to access the Alma Mater Atrium pretty easily. And from there, we can apparently... Uh, find uh, a couple NPCs, maybe later on, and make our way to Alma Mater itself, where I think the last of our three big gods we need to square off with can be found. Let me make sure I've, I've got everything. Oh wait, no, sorry. Um, according to what I'm looking at, the best way to go is actually through a pathway we've not used before. The uh, Ikari Walkways path, which is just past Artillery, I want to say. So we do that, we'll be able to snag up a bunch of treasure. Hey MC, how's it going, man? I uh, hope you caught at least a little bit of yesterday's or last night's VOD, because we ran into a god that was designed way, way better than uh, Nemundus, I, I actually really, really liked, and was apparently the boss featured in the open beta test demo that the devs uh, provided to the public uh, a couple months before launch, I wanted to say. Ozzy. Ozzy was really cool. Um, intimidating, had a brilliant design, heavily inspired by, like, uh, South Asian depictions of, I want to say it's, it's um, Kali or other destroyer gods. It's really good. Oh, had a hectic day, man. Well, I hope it's been a good day, nonetheless. I, I feel that, though. Hold on, one second. Right at the start of the stream, I need to go have a snack, because I've uh, been working out more and more lately, which means that the old blood sugar's been out of whack, because of, of course it has. This is better, though. This is much better than being on the upper end of my, my blood glucose scale, running too high. Just a second here. Hold on, real quick, I'll post down in the Discord, um, a photo of the boss we found last night, um, or I'll, I'll send it to you, rather. 
uh, because I was really, really impressed by it. MC says trying to get that 25k endless point challenge for Antifate 2. 12k so far. Oh, almost halfway there. That's a that is a ton of points though. Best of luck, as always. So I think we access Alma Mater through the uh, other side of the artillery boss arena, right? There's a black hole door, and it is the black hole hour, but I bet we can't access it yet, right? No, 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 we need to align rings first. It seems like we actually need to align rings for most of these. MC says you get about 400 per round if you don't do anything too crazy. Oh, man, it sounds like it'll take forever, but imagine the feeling of accomplishment you'll get once you, you finally clear that. I'm so tempted to, like, just play our circus music for the entire stream, but I'm not going to subject y'all to that. Oh wait, this is, uh, this is where we fought the Horde. Or no, no, shortcut, sorry. It's this way. This way to artillery. This is a much clearer area. I just... My head's elsewhere right now. We're not too far from where we found the circus music, as a matter of fact. It's a shame we couldn't complete Ozzy's quest before we, uh, before we killed him, because apparently he would have given us a third death cube. We'll, we'll get another chance, though. Apparently if we want to get the true ending, we'll be bringing him back. Yeah, no, he's, he's very, very cool looking. As he says, I will not feel much, but a little satisfaction. Oh, you should feel a ton of satisfaction. That's... That's something very few players have the, the patience to do, I would imagine. There we go. And the Ashenborn, the god locked up in uh, Alma Mater, I think is going to give us a mission to kill Thespians, which should be really easy. As they aren't, uh, aren't exactly the most resilient enemies in the world. They deal crazy damage, but they're, they're really frail. Okay, here we go. Right past the artillery boss room. And it was artillery that were opening fire on us around the alma mater gates. Um, regular enemy variants, I would imagine. Meaning, you know, not too bad. Okay, we want to avoid that if we can, because the tram may or may not run us over. We have been here before. Never mind. MC says, considering I'm a jig jigsaw solver and my biggest done so far is 6k pieces. Wow, that kind of patience is not that rewarding anymore. But was looking at the average playtime for Hand of Fate 1 and 2. Five hours of the average for Hand of Fate 1. Yeah, that sounds about right. And nine for Hand of Fate 2. Yeah, yeah, that, those both sound right. Maybe, like, if you want to do most of the major stuff in Hand of Fate 2, a little more than nine hours is needed. But those broadly sound accurate. Alright, come on, now we just gotta find passage to Alma Mater through here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or does this lead us to optional loot? Oh no, here we go. Yep! We can take the, the duct to the Alma Mater atrium. 
which is where we burned the consumer boss alive with Death Cube last time. We've upgraded Death Cube as well, so it is now Death Cube plus three. And in fact, instead of leveling our character, I think I may want to just invest in more and more stat boosts for Death Cube. Pretty sure since the boss here is called the Ashenborn, it might be like a, uh, a fire elemental or an induction elemental boss, so it might not be super duper useful. Uh, but that's why we have Light Death Cube. And she says, I, they have 190 hours of playtime for Hand of Fate 2. Wow, golly Moses. And you're still doing and discovering things. That, that tells you there's a lot of intricacy and layers to that game. I appreciate that. So what do we have here? We got carbon. And probably carbon. Oh no, a heater shield model. Sun Hall Access Pass. I like the sun and miss it dearly every day. Oh yeah, we got a second uh, set of Arisen Dominion credentials in case we ever want to do that again. Shortcut to the Sun Worship Chamber of the Arisen Palace. Oh, never mind then. Hello, fellow spawn. Cabaret key? Now you're talking. Take us to, like, a crazy Irid Novo nightclub, please. Ah, that's all porties are doing stuff. Um, apparently the owner of this business decided to lock themselves in. Unlocks the door to the cabaret in the alma mater atrium. Oh, that bodes well. And I am using a guide to help me make sure I don't miss any major items this time around, because god, this game has a lot of secrets, like a whole lot. And we want to make sure we get, like, the most complete ending in all the boss fights and all of that. So I've not been spoiled on anything up ahead as far as bosses or, like, enemies' uh, encounters go, but I do have basically an item checklist uh, running along with us to make sure we don't miss anything too big. Like, uh, like that. Definitely would have missed that. This whole area is just hidden behind a false wall. Hmm. Well, let's, let's go open this. I think it's an elevator door over here first. Yep. We got a lift. Where's it going to take us? Oh! Multiple floors. Well, we'll get back to you then. Oh, the cabaret. Nice. Oh, wait. We were in the cabaret. Less nice. Um, what all is there to discover here? Gotta be something, right? Other than more junk for the Arisen. I definitely want to get up there. I can see a Viper up there. I guess the lift might actually be the way to go, then. First floor is quarantined. Oh, that's not great. Um, and we're on the second floor, so take us up to the third. Maybe we'll get some kind of override that'll allow us to go down to the bottom floor, or we'll have to get there another way. And this, of course, isn't where the god is. That would be the uh, alma mater institute proper. Oh, hello. Oh, another black hole door. Great. To be honest with you, I, I appreciate the fact that we have to, like, align those ring towers to access all of these. 
but I don't like kind of how out of the way they are. Like, remembering where all of them are is going to be a nightmare. And there's nothing else up here, apparently. And some of them guard pretty important stuff, like, um... Like Archon Knight fights. I know the one back in, uh, I think it's the Son District, has another one of the Archon Knights for us. And one of them's here somewhere. I don't think they're behind the black hole door, but I could be wrong about that. Alright, so back out into the atrium proper. Yeah, here's the weird glowy stuff I miss. The Archons have apparently set up shop around here. And well, it is a relatively beautiful area, just like Port Isidun. Down it goes. He says I just finished watching a speedrun today. Speedrun of this? 20 some odd minutes of it. Oh, Echo, Defender of the Future. That's a pretty good game by all accounts. I'm sure there are some killer Hellpoint speedrun strats, but God knows old Brady don't know any of them. Alright, this is the Consumer's Boss Arena. I do love that our, like, dodge attack just sends them flying. As he says, now I need to get my hands on that game. It, it's not a super rare game to find, like, a physical copy of, is it? Oh, or have, have we even been over here? We have not. Hello, Breach. And data. Alma Mater Atrium Union Park. Uh, let's go ahead and synchronize this. We've got the breach, uh, materials. So a park, this is gonna be quite lovely, I'd imagine. Ooh, yeah. Dude, check this out. Now, th this is environment design right here. And it gets its own title card. Here we go. This is someone we're going to need to talk to. He's, um, a rather questionably coded Native American. I don't, uh... Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, okay, we'll sit. Yeah, this is a little problematic, but uh, apparently we need his help to bring the gods back to life once we're done with them. No, 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 we, we killed the puppet master. That's This is somebody else. Oh dear. Well, uh, that's more than a little problematic, but apparently he'll be a big help later on. Uh, MC says I've played Echo 1 and 2. I have neither a PS2 nor a Dreamcast. Oh, okay. Oh, I know exactly the Echo game you're talking about now. I used to see it in, like, GameStop all the time. Whalebone Halberd. That's interesting. Damn it, artillery! Why must you live up to your name so well? Car 
Marvin. Oh, we've got like a sort of cave system or breach anyway. Carbon. Oh, hello. The Revolute Warrior set. And this is a sigil connected to the Underworld. Can we uh, do anything with it right now, or do we have to come back later? MC says, rude wake-up call, I say, yeah, no, they're, at least they don't deal too much damage right now. Uh, the boss variant uh, packed a pretty hefty punch. These guys don't. Well, this is one way to spice up a day in the park. Oh my god, Celestial Beast, really? Um, tell you what, let's let's go shut these guys down first. And yes, those those rounds do home. Okay, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's like rusted. Too bad once we finally close the gap. The original artillery had a fair amount of health. I mean, not, not just a ton, but more than enough to give you pause. Okay, now is there another one around here? I do like that they're like glowing red highlights make them easy to pick out uh, amongst the uh, bright blues and muted violets of Alma Mater. This is visually one of my favorite areas in the game so far. Vipers are like this game's answer to dogs. Um, oh, the Sanity Puppet. What, pray tell, does that do? And she says, I really can't help but see a post-apocalyptic cliff empire city. With all of, like, the stark uh, blue and white colors, yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that too. Oh, it's an accessory. Reduces vulnerability to Nile forces. Somehow, gazing at this grotesque little figure brings a faint feeling of sanity. Er, serenity. Well, good for us. Now we can explore the park to our heart's content. Oh, hold up. Do, do I see a boss door over there? I think I do. We'll have to go check that out shortly. But first things first, I'm clear in this park. Now that artillery's been decommissioned... He says parkour. Oh, if only. Oh, dude, can you imagine a Souls like with like legitimate parkour mechanics? That'd be crazy. Don't know that it'd be good, but it would be crazy. Can I do anything here? Right. Huh. Nope. Power station for the the institute, I guess. Now we know where these things came from. The Arisen didn't create them themselves. The Arisen don't seem to have done a whole lot ever since they were uh, hijacked by Nemundus, as a matter of fact, which makes sense with uh, his theology being what it was, just total inaction in all things. go. Alright, now what goodies do we have around here? Gotta be something, right? Something we haven't gotten already? We've got more open level design, uh, 
a really clear indicator of where to go to progress the, the story or the stage. I really like this. This is much better design than what we saw earlier on in the game. Oh, oh, and we've got a creation storm. And he says, might not be a boss door, it is game event hour. Uh, the door was present before the accretion storm started, I, I think. And I do know from a fa for a fact from, like, looking at my little item checklist, there are multiple bosses in this area. There's three, as a matter of fact, and we've only taken down one. Oh, sorry, technically there's four. But we're gonna have to do some work to track down one of them. Axions. Those will do really well in granting us, uh... You know, oh, hold on. Hello, message. Just another message from a backer or someone, I think. Yeah, it gave us data, though, so thanks, uh, Joseph. Appreciate you, man. see what's down beneath. Uh, well, no, we'll go up first, then down. Oh, hello. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is how we find the, the hidden boss. The Nile Prophet Hand. That's a catalyst, I think. And a catalyst conductor for it. Nice. A hand of the underworld that grabs the weak and drags them down into the abyss. In ancient times, the man who wielded this power could give birth to an entire religion. Okay, so how does this work? We've got, like, a short-range repulsor, basically. Okay. That's pretty cool. I dig it. We'll uh, deal with the obelisk later. That's probably going to take us to a fight with an Archon Knight. Which, with the assistance of the Breach, we should be able to burn down the cinders effortlessly um, with Death Cube. And he says, oh no, no, don't worry about it, man. It's totally fine. I, I got your message. I just, uh... And it's something I would be more than glad to do. I actually just try to avoid talking too much during our sessions right now. As I know, I'm I'm something of a motor mouth, comparatively speaking. But no, no, I I got you. Sorry, I didn't respond straight away. I think I was in the middle of dealing with some kind of crisis with uh, the the online portal I've been tasked with maintaining for a couple of my my classes, and it just slipped by. I'm so sorry about that. I will be happy to do that, though, seeing as how most of my character, most of what my character is at this point is just, like, really intricate comic relief characterization. I appreciate it, man. Alright, so I think we've got everything we, we can right here for the time being. Or everything that, like, jumps out at us. Oh, yeah, but there's, there's a whole district over there. Hold up. Hold up. MC says I was doing a little roleplay experiment Sunday. Oh yeah, what you got? Haha. -ha. I don't even know that we're supposed to be over here right now, but we are. Oh! Oh, ring coordinates. I-5. Hey, Exit, how's it going, man? Always glad to have you here, brother. Hope you've had a good day so far. We, uh, we actually found a boss that was really cool last night. When there were no witnesses to confirm that it ever happened. But we did. Um, turns out the second of the three gods locked up in the station was something worth our time and attention. And actually had animations and the like. So step up. It was a rough day. Yeah, I saw some of that, man. I'm... Sorry about that, but really glad that you're able to relax and kick back now. Where does this take us? Oh god, no. No, no, no. Not back there. Oh god, not there.
Well, there is no purpose coming over here aside from the eye. Now let's go see what in the blue hell is over here behind the... the, the fog energy shield. One of the other bosses, I would hope. Maybe? Kinda sorta? Oh, this, this looks like a horde if ever I've seen one, but let's give it a shot. Yep, it is. Oh, you're weak, but you fire so rapidly. Oh, yep, there's that stamina break again. Ha. Well, that was tricky, but we made it. Something you really gotta be cognizant of in these, like, little horde battles is enemies spawning right on top of you. Demon we can handle, we just gotta get rid of this guy. It looks like demons, like just regular demons too, not like the alpha we fought last night, are the bosses of all of these little horde mode encounters, so they're not too bad. This he says I ran a long monologue in the presence of my DM to express my survival character's internal thoughts. This was for the other campaign, right? Oh, right, and it just spits us back out at the consumer boss fight. Never mind, then. That wasn't the boss I was hoping to find. Maybe there's something good in here, though. Hey, what? I think we just ran into Hellpoint's version of this door does not open from this side. Damn it. Well, okay. Okay, I, I can play that. Let's go play with our giant glowing eldritch obelisk instead. Oh, right. Right after we get some loot. Hold up. Whoop. I do wish there was just a little bit more enemy variety, but given that this game didn't have the biggest budget in the world, I kind of understand why there isn't. Uh, there's plenty of variety in terms of the bosses, though, and like, in Ozzy's area, for instance, almost all the enemies were totally unique to that god. And they were really cool. And we actually got one of them to use as a weapon, which is uh, a first. Uh, aside from, like, maybe the cause parasite, I think. MC says that's something I prefer not to do because talking too much, but I think it helped my DM get a better sense of my character. Yeah, well, whatever you need to do to, like, sort of set the, the scene for the, the character you're inhabiting or representing. I mean, I'm just nothing but fish puns, so I'm, I'm pretty easy. Oh my god, look at him go flying! <laughs> Jesus! I do like these ragdolls, I really do. Is this a secret wall? Almost looked like it, the way the textures kind of awkwardly blended together. But nope, that's just Hellpoint. Again, some of these, like, skyboxes are absolutely gorgeous, so... Uh, kudos to the character and environment design teams, like just the, the visual artists, they did a remarkable job with what they had. Apparently the character designer previously worked for Beanox on, I think, their Spider-Man games, and I can really see those influences here. Okay. Back into the underworld. He says, I mean, you are fish, but you have a goal. Yes, that's right. Be best fish. Delving into what led you into that path is as interesting as playing it out. I know. I know. As I said, I'm looking forward to the rest of the crew's, like, character development missions. Those will be fun. 
So I'm I'm thinking an Archon's going to be in here, like one of the Archon Knights. Um, and hey, if they're not, at least we'll be able to harvest some some components for Ozzy once we revive him. We should be good here as well, because the Archons are really, really frail, and should be weak to Death Cube if we need it. All right. MC says, I'll predict what's in there with 100% accuracy. Well, it is just the world we were in, but mirrored. But there's gonna be some, some like, Nile shards around here, right? Oh, I see you, Archons. Because it's really hard to see anything else. Again, I like the design of these fellas, I really do. And apparently their god is the one that's, like, stowed away inside Alma Mater. Maybe. Hopefully. Oh, I see a boss door. Hopefully. I don't really need a ton of this Nihil stuff yet. But we'll go ahead and gather what we can while we're here. Like, defeating the, the knights gives you a ridiculous amount of this stuff, though. Hey, Breach Synchronizer, there we go. That's the good stuff. I do appreciate the little, like, petrification effect that the Archons have, though, because it's like they carry the cold of the, the Void with them, like, just the coldness of space. That's honestly a pretty nice aesthetic touch. So we can't leave the park, right? That's just a barrier. One of these is bound to be a boss door, though. Maybe the one at the top of the little plaza here? Nope. There's plenty of them over there, though, isn't there? We can't get shards from these Archons. We need to find, like, the knights. Oh, Nile Rock. Right on. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Whew. That was much closer than I'd care for it to be. There's more of them here than there was underneath uh, the Arisen Dominion. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense. They, they are kind of headquarters over here. As far as the Outsiders go, they probably have my favorite uh, design followed by the Thespians, and then uh, the Demons. The Demons are like, okay, not terribly interesting. Alright, let's try storming the gates then. I wonder what on earth these things were. We, we've not seen skeletons like this anywhere else that I'm aware of. Shards? Yay, shards. At least we've gotten plenty of Axians from them. Shards and shards. If they were just a little more durable, they would be among my least favorite enemies in the entire game, but fortunately they real frail. Okay. This area is sealed as well. Well, the boss has got to be somewhere, right? Give me a minute. I may do a little bit of investigation if we don't get any solid uh, leads after a, a moment of additional exploration and shard gathering. Oh 
Oh my god. That's uh, one of the slavers. Been a while since we've seen one of you. You happen to drop an Archon Fragment for us? Yep. Okay, so it's not a total loss. Oh. Oh, yikes. Oh my god! No, 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 no. Well, we're dead. Well, we were almost dead. Whew. It's so hard to see them. And uh, as you can see, our light doesn't do just a whole world of good in here. There's a slaver down there, so we've kind of got to take it down so we can advance Ozzy's quest line. At least I thought there was. Maybe not. Okay. Now hold on, there was that little cave down near the bottom of the of the trenches around here. Maybe that's where our, our Archon Knight is. It's a pretty big little park. Don't understand why it got its own uh, title card when none of the other smaller environments in the game did, but hey, here we go. All right, wish us luck. Here we go. Into the breach. Which number are you? Number three. Oh, and it fights just like the other one. How do you do with fire? Not super well, as we would imagine. And they fight just like the other one. Okay. There we go. Yep, got a fragment and the model for their shield. Very nice. Just two more. And it looks like they all share the same moveset, by and large. That one might have had slightly more health than the first one, but... MC says, Cube of Death. Hell yeah, man, it's burned two gods to death. The the Archons are nothing. And remember, they're made of, like, this, this dark, cold void energy. So the fact that we're basically carrying around a miniature sun shooting out rays of fire is uh, probably going to be more than enough to keep them at heel. They're this game's uh, equivalent, basically, of... Um, of the Black Knights. Or the Hade Knights. But you know, the sad thing is, one thing that I don't like that was changed between Dark Souls 2's regular edition and Scholar of the First Sin edition is that originally the Hade Knights were non-respawning unique enemies who would appear at various locations throughout the game to maybe drop their armor, but definitely drop their, like, unique powerful weapons, but were, like, just kind of retooled into elite enemies for the, the Flaming Tower. Which, again, it makes sense in the lore, but, like, if you're going to do that, replace them with something else that maybe is just a little bo bit more interesting than the Forlorn. It was the Forlorn, right? Those those guys that kept invading us. Oh! Oh, artillery's back online. Everything's back online. Everyone is here. And he says Ornid Hands version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, that's a, that's a very minor complaint, but... Just something that came to mind. It's like the nature preserved from hell. Coming to you live from Michael Bay's Animal Planet.
Also, dude, wash your artillery, please. That was not a euphemism. That is the actual name of the robot. Hey, and we got its cannon, which is a really powerful energy weapon uh, that we're probably not going to be using. We're finally almost to alma mater proper. Doesn't look like we're missing... Oh, we might be missing something. I th think I see treasure over there. And so he says, I think so. I mean, Hand of Fate 2 reuses many enemies from Hand of Fate, but they feel fresh. Yeah, they, they all have different mechanics, and almost all of them have uh, unique appearances as well. Like, they, they had their models updated or completely reworked. Or they have new gimmicks. And also, it doesn't reuse many enemies, I should say. Wholesale. Very few. Okay, so welcome to Alma Mater, the research institution that sponsored the whole lot of the mess that went on around here. I guess it's kind of this game's equivalent to Bergenworth College. Yeah, the Athenium. Here's a proper boss. Is this going to be the hostess? Yes, it is. Look, look, there's her weapon. All right, let's do it. Our praying hostess. Oh, no, that's a design, kids. Oh, man, she's got, she's got some range on her, though. And we're screwed. Yep. Got right up against a bookcase, but that's okay. That's okay. We uh, get to respawn right outside the boss fight, and we fought one of these before. We fought a couple of them as regular enemies. Uh, it just looks like Death Cube, for once, might not be the best idea, because she's not um, anywhere near big enough to catch more than one of its projectiles at anything other than close range. So we might want to just, while we've got our healing items, empty the cube into her at close range, dodging as best we can to burn her health down, then just go in with the prod. MC says, I remember complaining a lot about the Poisoner of Greed, but the more I fight him, the more I like that enemy. Don't know that we ever fought one, because we didn't do Katura's storyline all the way through yet, anyway. Um, still keeping my eye on that backlog. Uh, probably going to be just something we take on as, like, cool little downtime streams around uh, the holidays. But, um... I liked most of the enemy types in Hand of Fate 2. There aren't any I can say were, were distinctly bad. Um, I feel like there aren't nearly enough enemies in the shadows or uh, mischief factions to justify them being like separate entities unto themselves, but that's about it, really. Okay, let's try that again. Keeping in mind, she can literally drive us insane and cause our camera to start wigging out, which is not my jam. Okay, so we got our shield, we got our death cube, we've got artillery raining down on us from above. Ow. MCS, what do you see the mischief from Shadow Factions? You've not seen the gimmick of the Shadow Faction, I think. No, but I know there's only two enemies in it, which is a little disappointing. More than a little disappointing, really. Again with the stamina break! Jesus Christ! We're, we're going to die out here. We are actually going to die out here. single blast nearly devastates our stamina. My god! If you'd let me get in it... What the hell? This is... This is impossible. This ghost is friggin' impossible. It 
it's able to get attacks off faster than I can move. Oh my god. Wow. That's, uh, that's not great, if I'm being honest. Also notice that it never ran out of energy like I would. And, something I learned, I suppose, it can keep its shield up. Its stamina didn't break after one or two hits like mine would, which then ends up sending you reeling stock still for about three or four seconds instead of, what, in Dark Souls, if your stamina's broken, you're able to roll away, not raise your guard necessarily, but roll away after maybe one second? Roughly? Oh, apparently I was supposed to shield bash it. Uh, keep forgetting that mechanic is in here. Because, um, it's not often very useful, because not a lot of enemies have shields. Well, let's try that again. And I know for a fact, after this, our praying hostess is going to be very, very simple. There it is. This one will be armed with the prod, though, so... Look at the difference there, kids. Oh, that's... I thought so. There is a pair of artillery units. One of them's just in an area that I don't think we can access all that easily. Actually have to come around for that later, I don't know. There's all of those no axions. As he says, Mischief Faction has five enemy types, you met three, I think. Um regular goblins, uh like goblin archers, goblin chieftain, gnomes. So four. But yes, that that sounds right. Okay, let's do it. With my favorite gimmick. She's got, like, no health. But she's got the combos, alright. She's, uh, one of the second god's creations. Uh, the, the puppet master. Goodbye. And we got the Hostess uh, trophy and the alma mater credentials from her. Right on. Yeah, see, not bad at all, really. That was okay. Exit asked, did you get the mixtape too? Oh man, I... I, I wish. Uh, there's like five different uh, sound applications you can get for the Hypercube, and they're all incredible. This is the only one we have, but it's the only one I need. It's crazy, like, futuristic circus music, which is, like, perfect for Hellpoint, I think. I wish it could just, like, drown out the, uh, the standard boss fight music. Or just replace it entirely. MC says that was heavy murdering. Sure was. Okay, so Alma Mater looks pretty nice. We're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled for books and the like we can access around here for data. Because we need at least 150% data, apparently. To, uh, no, no, sorry, I was looking for the light. <laughs> Man, you know that, that feeling you get when you, like, try to reach for the bedside lamp? in the middle of the night, but instead you turn on your ridiculous techno circus music. That's a relatable moment. 
Um, we need 150% data to access the, the complete ending. And the gods' quest lines at this point, now that I think about it. There's gotta be something up here, right? Aha! Model for a light melee conductor. I'll take it. Oh, MC, you also missed yesterday. Um, Exit and Seth were present with me for the, the entire trial. We met the first of the gods, the one that was at the top of the Arisen Dominion, and um, he, uh, he could irradiate us inside of two hits. A single hit took off over half our health, despite having pretty good armor and resistances overall. And uh, his actual character model never moved for most of the fight. He just, like, projected this aura out Sometimes in the middle of attacks when he was... Or, or in the middle of reeling. Oh, hello. Yeah, no, Exit's got it right. It was Zenyatta from Overwatch, more or less. These results show an unbelievable spike in reported cases of depression and mental disorders in the past ten years. This is not good. Might explain the multiple outbursts of violence witnessed on Irid Novo. Could it be the radiation? Something wrong with our food or drugs? I bought a shuttle ticket to next week's convention. I need to speak about about this. Yeah, man, I wonder what it could be. It, you know, it could be that people aren't getting enough sun like they're used to um, back on their, their terrestrial homes. It could be that um, may, maybe the air isn't just being properly filtered. Or it could be that uh, there is a crazy god associated with nihilism that's been called in from beyond the stars, locked up at the top of the only sanctioned church on board, and that the port, which is, like, structurally unfit to house any cargo, has been taken over by a crazed puppet master god of cruelty and deceit, um, and his, his army of flesh full of minions. It, 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 just say it, all equally plausible. And he says, you know, farts can also kill me fast. Um, it was it was a weird fight, man. It was a really weird fight, and not a particularly good one. The second god's fight was really good, though. Here we go, the library. Entropic melee conductor. Good. 2061, the first exile. Dozens of colonies leave Earth permanently, giving birth to... Giving birth to who's who would become the mystical people of the stars. Exit says, stay away from the tacos. Oh, I would not trust anything prepared in this place. The members of this young species are distinguished by their pale skin tone, tall stature, wider pupils, and complete lack of body hair. So, Erythelians, basically. Okay. At least we finally get to figure out what on Earth is going on here. 2475, the first successful space-tearing operation, followed shortly by contact with the race known as the Arisen. After the initial shock and a few localized conflicts, relations between humans and Arisen become quite fruitful. Right, so that's the, the Patriarch's uh, sect. Or currently Nemundus' sect. 2552, launch of the Irid Novo project, a great collaboration between Arisen and humans. Entering operation in 2560, Irid Novo eternally orbits the black hole Sagittarius A, asterisk, harvest, harvesting energy and making new natural discoveries such as the exploitation of axion particles. Great for leveling up, I've been told. Twenty twenty seven. Powerful transhumanist cults force populations to increase bandwidth with AI lest they become part of an obsolete class. The beginning of the Great Human Purge. Population, 8.0014 billion. Oh, this is going to end well. And we were created by a malevolent, or potentially malevolent, uh, mass AI. Created with the assistance of the Arisen, I think? Oh. Another melee conductor. Not anything we need, but good to have. Massive library, isn't it? Okay, what about 
up top. Anything we missed? Probably. Twenty forty nine, Earth's population begins to recover following the massacres of the globalist regime. Seven hundred seventy six million people. Okay. Oh, we hit a hundred percent. Nice. Thank you, author. Um, our light is not projecting light. What if we go over to black light? Nope, nothing there either. Okay, light's broken. Good. Anything else in here? Came all the way up here just for some weird diatribe about globalization. Okay, that's fine. Hero. Hello. Another Predator human set. We've already got that though. Um, let's top off our healing, why not? Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping they would top off our, our charges of the healing item. And our hypercube doesn't work anymore. Do we at least still have the circus music? Okay, so that works, just the useful stuff doesn't. That is very strange. Okay, so here can we craft our, our cool new stuff? Or that, that armor set we found? The Revolute Warrior stuff? Indeed we can. He says, what are you talking about? The music is the only useful stuff. It's the only good stuff, but it is not the only useful stuff. Okay, so we need a pulse mineral and nervous wiring to create the mass AI patch conductor. That'll be plot relevant later. Right now, we'll just go ahead and craft all of this better warrior stuff. just in case we need it. Okay, and while we're here, we'll go ahead and process our resources. Which, there's a ton. Oh, we get anti-carbon from the Nile stuff. Very nice. Anything we can create here. Oh, the Archon Shield. Um, okay, let me double check something real quick. I want to make sure we don't do something horribly, horribly stupid. Um, well, stupider than usual, anyway. Um, need to see if we can't find um, what to do with the Air of Chaos. Because we've got all the stuff we need to make it. Let's see. Okay, good. Good, good, good. We will need to create it, but... And we can probably do so now. Um, there's one other quest line we might need to do. Let me see. Hold on. Alright, alright. Okay. Now back to the alma mater atrium. I think we might have everything of of use here. Let's make sure. Yep, looks like it.
Sorry, almost there. So yeah, time to craft the Air of Chaos with all of these dreadful arcane materials we found. Good. And uh, the Corrupted Ferula, maybe? Ferula of the Prodigal Spawn. Yikes. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? Just in case we need it. It is a big dex weapon, though. MC says that's going to be a great YouTube video. A TikToker drank two bottles of Benadryl. This is what happened to her organs. Why, why would you drink two bottles of Benadryl? Why would you drink one bottle of Benadryl? The truth is that the Arisen have succeeded where we failed. A perfect transposition of consciousness, memory, and personality into an immortal synthetic form. Strangely, they don't embrace eternal existence, but choose to end their lives at the age of 152 Earth years. Yeah, well that's silly. You give me immortality through AI, and I'm riding that stuff just as long as I can until somebody turns me off for, I don't know, replacing the entire planetary defense grid with references to Viper albums or something. Oh boy, even more data. We, we found the lore dump, y'all. For decades, we've possessed the technology to synchronize quantum vibrations within a small concentrated space authoring the signature of another reality, and yet we've always resisted against using it. Not only do we intend to move forward with the project, but we believe that piercing a meta-connection through multiple realities all at once should be established as soon as possible. While organic matter cannot... okay. You've gained knowledge about the piercing of dimensions. Great. Good. Yes. This is something I'm happy about. He says, that this is a channel I follow. It's a doctor reviewing weird cases and trying to do some public service in the process. Now well, that sounds pretty interesting. Really interesting, actually. So this uh, area was overseen by the Ministry. Meaning it's uh, human territory, I think. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Empty message. Okay. So we are not in Alma Mater proper yet. We're just in kind of its various endless lobbies. Let me, uh, maybe unequip uh that Omnicube program, then re-equip it for, for all the good it'll do. Ah, no dice. Maybe when we load into a different zone, it'll operate as intended again. Okay, so where to from here? Once we meet and kill our third god, we should have almost a full 150% data. Which will be all we need to revive the gods and tackle their, like, really big quest lines. So welcome back to uh, Pathfinding in Hellpoint. It's gonna be a hell of a time. this. Okay. Oh, so apparently this place isn't alma mater at all. This is just like a giant public library. My bad. Ah, ha, ha. 
Okay, looks like we are in totally the wrong area. And we've gotten everything we can from here for now. Including, you know, the, the credentials and all of the lore and all that. All for defeating um, our praying hostess, which was not a bad fight at all. Oh, and she's still here, too. Look at that. Oh, she doesn't have a Dark Souls-style ragdoll. We could just kick her out. It'd be great if bosses did that. That would that would earn the game a couple extra points, in my estimation. See if we can't go take out that other artillery unit while we're up here. We should be able to make it to and defeat the third god before uh, we have to cut the stream for today, though. And that'll have us primed for the end game, actually. Maybe only one more Hellpoint stream after this, then it's on to Mortal Shell, which is by all accounts an absolutely fantastic game I can't wait to delve into. <laughs> blows. Is, is that... Is that like the Travelocity Gnome? What, what on earth is he doing here? That is, that is the strangest um, cameo I was expecting to find in, um, of all things, a Souls-like, but okay. Okay, the, the, the Wandering Gnome is part of this game's canon now. Man, Hellpoint's a weird game. Oh right, I forgot the first one just fell. Okay. Well let's let's fix that. Oh it fell and that was enough distance to kill me? What? Then it landed on top of a tree. That's that's what I was getting around to. It landed on top of a tree. One second, we'll just wait for this to load back in, then grab our Axions and get out of Dodge. MC says this game never disappoints. Again, I I feel the need to stress, um, it's not a bad game at all, and it's not even mediocre in some cases. It's quite good in that it goes for so many unique or novel uh, things in regards to the, the Souls-like formula. And it succeeds with a fair number of them, it's just others aren't done really well, or the game overall is just kind of lacking a, a sheen of polish that maybe we would expect from, you know, a, a double-A AA or triple-A game, which this isn't. So I, I believe in being kind of lenient to titles like this. It, yeah, yeah, perfect. MC says it's a nice game, but execution is unstable. It's really inconsistent, is the best, way, the best word for it, I think. Like, this area, as, the, as a whole, is not bad at all. It's quite nice, really. Uh, the Arisen Dominion looked cool, but its mechanical execution was a trash fire. Um, Port Isidun looked okay, but, like, in terms of design, it was a friggin' fantastic area. Oh, hi, ghost. Bye, ghost. Right, 
Let's sync up with this breach over here. Nice. And let's head back out to, uh, or past the consumer boss arena. Apparently that's where we're supposed to go. Hey, our light works again. Small victories. Still important. Oh yeah, we're supposed to head up there, that's right. There was that other light institute we never even explored. Two artillery units. But first, there's something we missed. And that just will not do. still hit me somehow. And, uh, totally no-sold a couple of our attacks. Wow. Yeah, we got it, though. We want to go near the area where we found the, uh, the railgun schematic, apparently. Detection on some of these guys seems a little a little wonky, but not terribly. I mean, trust me, we're going for the most important treasure in this area. Oh, another tool victim chest. I do like the fact that other spawn are serving standard enemies here. MC says, listen, they put money on making big areas, not polish. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like, give us much smaller, uh, more substantial areas, and like, more of the boss battles and uh, character designs that these folks seem to be reasonably talented uh, with. Like, like, just focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. Okay. Hold on. So we want to go from the gallery. We're almost to the, the entry breach here. Oh, wow. I do love me some ragdolls, though. So we need to go... Hmm. This is it. This is the entrance from, uh... The walkways, maybe? No, 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 not the, not the walkways. Um, uh, the Son District, I think. Here we go. Trust me, this is worth it. Yeah, that's a thing we can do, apparently. Ta-da! New jukebox program. NCS, will you play the sequel chapter of this game? Hellpoint, the Thespian Feast? That's a thing? They're releasing DLC? The answer is yes, of course. The Thespians have my favorite area in the game, easily. Also, let me show off the weapon we got from their god. It's pretty sick. It was also a common enemy in the area. It's, it's one of his hands. Still living. quite like it. Oh, 
Hold on, I'm, I'm looking this up then. Uh, Hell Point. The Thespian Feast. Thank you for pointing that out, MC. I never would have seen that. Okay. Oh, it's a standalone game. Uh. Oh, wait, no. No, I'm sorry. This was not a sequel. This was a prequel game, I think. Maybe? Oh my god, it is. Hold on. It's weird that the, th the thespians got, uh... Wait a minute, I'm, I'm like looking at screenshots too. They they reuse the, the main boss of the the game. Or, sorry, the, the thespians area. The, the Master of Puppets is apparently just back in his regular form. That is... That is weird. That is a very weird thing. Thanks for bringing that to my attention, though. I'm going to have to check that out. By the way, I noticed we have quite a few folks here, so I just wanted to say thank you all so much for dropping by and showing your support uh, for us and for the stream. I'm always happy to have you here. Hey, Seth, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day so far. We are slightly less lost than we were last night. Hey, Potato! Good to see you, man. Hope everybody's doing well. Ah, lift. Thank you. Never mind. Oh, you made lasagna. Lovely. It's, it's been ages since I've made any. Might have to do soon. Oh, another nerve suit. Nice. And a coin. Useless, but shiny. Oh, right, right. But sorry, we, we missed the most important thing. We got another uh, jukebox track. And that is the, the best part of this game. All right, what do we have? What do we have? I've got high hopes. Any elevators offline? All right, welcome to David Guetta's Hell Point. I'll be your host for the evening. This is still the best part of the game, in my mind. Oh! Oh, y'all think this music is nice. This is some sellout trash compared to Music D. It says, Polish Techno or Scooter. I, I think I'm familiar with that artist, actually. Oh, and thanks for the host, Seth. I appreciate it. Seth says the offline elevator is as annoying as the door that's locked from this side. Yeah... Yeah, that's this game's equivalent, basically. No, no, what, what you want is Music D. A reminder that this is a dark and serious cosmic horror game. Reminds me of Tetris techno music. Yes! No, 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 I've been using the. Or Exit says Commodore 64 music on crack. Either or, they. <laughs> they both sound like pretty apt descriptions to me. Don't worry, I will not subject you guys to too much of this just until we get to the new area, which is maybe. 30 seconds away. I killed a god with this music playing last night. Exit says, Viper's new album, I bought an Amiga 500. Well, no, if it was Viper, it'd be something like, Fuck the Amiga 600, I invented uh, the, the Commodore 64 in 1962, or something like that. And he says, in C64 music on crack, I have just the thing. Oh, please do share. Oh, my God. Hello? Alright, are we almost there? Yep, the artillery's here. And that's enough of that. I apologize. Oh! 
Okay, I didn't think they had a clear line of sight, but they do. They do. Yo, trees, trees, help me out. This is alma mater proper, isn't it? Yikes. Can we access the lift yet? MC says, check out Gift Creo on YouTube, A Mind is Born, and Lenatico. Will do afterwards, man. Thanks for the recommendation. <gasps> It's an elevator that actually works! That's new! Arcology underside. Um, no thanks. Not yet. We've got stuff to explore around here first. I think. Was this just a- nope, just a spear. Okay. Hey, Dancing Pot, thank you so much for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Pot says I'll drop a follow. You seem full of energy. Only today because we're actually discovering things. Oh, God. Okay, um, you know what? Arcology underside don't sound so bad to me. Nor does whatever's over here. Aha! I just says that's not true, Brady's always like this. Need I remind you about the great Yoga T-Pose God battle of 2020? Oh, shoot! That brings us right back out to the breach. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take it. Do we want to infuse ourselves? No, 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 not yet. We can, we can upgrade Death Cube a bit more later on. You know, this this brings to mind my first uh, experience at university. Remember pulling up to the campus, it looked just like this. Oh, God. Bob and Weave, Bob and Weave. Dancing Pot asks, is this anything like Dark Souls? Yes, this is uh, a game which wears its Souls-like inspirations on its sleeve. And while there are some questionable executions of certain concepts, uh, level design in particular, the levels tend to be very kind of sprawling and somewhat difficult to navigate. Um, for a small team, uh, an independent team, working on a budget on their first ever project together as a unit, it's really well done. There's um, pretty fleshed out cosmic horror uh, plot line and a fair amount of variety in uh, viable builds and equipment and things like that you can find. Oh yes sir, please go right ahead and buy it. And Seth says Brady's the king of subtle sarcasm. Yeah, not the thing people are trained uh, to expect from Americans, but apparently so. Either that or I just say like kind-hearted things that uh, about this game for instance, uh, that people cannot expect it cannot reasonably uh, think I mean, but I do. So we're headed to the underside of the space station now, and I I do know about this. We're going to, like, spacewalk through this area, which is kind of interesting. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Okay, so we, we go through here to activate that giant ring elevator. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, right now we're undergoing an accretion storm, meaning there's probably going to be, like, a little survival horde mini-boss somewhere around here. How many breach synchronizers do I have? I'm trying to get one uh, fast travel point in every area. <laughs> MC says there's a fine line between sarcasm and truth. You walk that fine line just fine. Thank you very much, my man. What do we have here? We are polar- or we are synchronizing. We are not polarizing. That makes the game harder, and I'm not about that. I'll play through the game on the, the baseline difficulty it was intended for, thank you very much. Okay, what's going to drop down on me there? Oh wait, no, that was glass. Sorry, just ran smack into it like a- like a bird. Hey, another breach synchronizer. So it's almost like we didn't lose anything at all. 
Weird that they don't give you, like, any at all in the first half of the game, but once you hit the back half, they just give you fast travel points like candy. I almost feel like that should... Well, no, maybe that shouldn't be inverted, because then newer players would be, uh... Maybe unduly pressured to create too many of them early on. Oh, God, it's you guys again. Hey, been a while. Haven't seen you since the start of the game. Hi. Uh, say, how do you feel about death cube? God. Yeah, they're just as nasty as ever. <laughs> MCS, would you say increasing the difficulty of the game makes it polarizing? A, great pun, and B, I actually think like in Dark Souls 2 with uh, the Champion's Covenant, it's a great uh, design mechanic. Uh, Sekiro has something similar. Let, like, establish a very solid baseline challenge, but then ultimately leave it up to the agency of the player to determine whether or not they would like to increase their risk and reward. Um just increases the likelihood that people will find an experience that suits them perfectly. Okay. What all's up here? Is it in a wall or anything? Is it? No. Or a door, I should say. Of course it's a wall. Oh, we've got... Probably not a boss. That's probably, um... Like, um, a survival horde. Okay, two of those celestial knights are up here, and we probably don't want to fight them quite yet. Cognition module. First time we've run into one of those. I think. Oh god, there's vipers here too. Oh, oh, it's getting hot. It's getting real hot. Retreat! Retreat! Oh, hello. Bones? Oh, Axions, not bones. Nice, nice, nice. Hello, Celestial Beast. Man, you must have gone pretty cheaply in Irinovo pet stores. You're all over the place. Used by every faction, just about. Now, yep, that, that screams wave survival to me. We may or may not be able to do this. Let's see if I can't get one more charge of the old healing item out of these vipers. And I know it's a terrible name for flying fish. It is what it is. Um, and then we'll be ready to uh, try our luck. A radioactive fish, that's good. That's the best kind of fish. It's not just going to be a fight with that. Nope, it's wave survival. Let's, uh, let's get rid of the Celestial Beast first. Then we can deal with the chaff. Gotta focus on the ones with these little blasters, as ever. We need some music. Hold on. Now it brings up the light. You don't provide boss fight music? I've gotta work with what you give me. I'm sorry. Uh, hold on, how do you feel about Death Cube? My good sirs. It helps a little bit. Okay, it's alright fellas, just, just take your time. Oh, there's not even a demon there? Uh, Alright. 
Got metallic glass, and is there supposed to be something spawning here, or did it just spawn off the platform? I mean, either is likely at this point, so... Axions... Good. And I think once we come back into uh, the alma mater atrium, then we can fight the third boss and, you know, progress into the Institute proper with all our ducks in a row. Eva outfit stuff. Uh, good. That is probably what we need to spacewalk. Looks like there's a secret door somewhere around here. Gee, I wonder where. Oh, reflex module. Very nice. Oh, I'm so tempted to use that. Oh, it's a slight boost to reflexes. Eh, but that extra health is pretty handy. Oh, coin. Finding these things all over the place now that I actually know what to look for. I do wish there was something you could actually do with them, but uh, as it stands, you only really get them uh, as pro to mark progress towards a trophy, which is something some folks would really go for, I think, but it would be nice if they had some kind of gameplay application. Okay, this is the, the room we definitely want to stay away from if we can help it. Oh, that's gonna be a hell of a platform and puzzle, isn't it? We might not access for a, a little while now, because I don't want to go plummeting awkwardly to my death. What do we have? Oh, oh, we want to access that, yes. Right in here, we can see that item from the outside. What is the item in question? Oh, a ration, we can trade that for some materials back, uh, back to the observatory, if we need it. And another one of those charged prisms, which I swear is just one of the ascended priest's, uh, little shields. Okay, well that's everything we can get here it looks like. So why don't we carry on past the uh, the boss arena? We did clear out the bottom floor here, didn't we? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was like, uh, I guess the closest thing to like a general store, supply store they had. Oddly ascetic lifestyle here on Irinovo. Very fancy architecture, but like not a whole lot going on. Okay, so what's past this plaza? Or in there, I should say. No, that's the, uh... Ah, made it. Coin. Anything else? Gotta be something good. Come on, now. Uh, nope. Guess not. MC says, imagining meeting up with a Grayson Hunt in this game. I just... I, I would love to see a proper sequel to this game. I really would. Um, like, give them a little bit more budget, a little bit more time, and they could turn out something phenomenal. The problem is, especially on a budget, quality Souls-likes are apparently really, really hard to make. Uh, with, with a few exceptions. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do. Hold on, let me make sure I'm, I'm in the right area. I may not be. Okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, so it turns out we are in the wrong area. In order to complete this entire little area, we need to find a suit of armor I missed entirely back at the embassy before we learned about the secret doors in this game. Then we can repair it using the schematics we found and only then can we progress properly through the rest of this area. So hold tight. We'll pop over to the embassy and be right back uh, to the Arcology underside. Let's transport ourselves to the Great Halls. Oh, yeah, yeah, MC says I was talking about Bulletstorm's main character. I... Yeah, there'd, there'd be a whole lot more swearing in this game if that were the case. 
a whole lot more. Alright, let me make sure I know exactly where I'm going now. Oh yes, yes I do, as it happens. Okay. Oh yeah, we, we missed a lot of stuff. Because this game has secret doors all over the place, and for the longest time, we suspected they existed and just didn't know exactly how to activate them. Let's track them down, then. Nothing necessarily in here, right? Nope. You can see these really distinctive grooves on the wall where they appear. MCS, I wonder, did Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 have a lot of secret doors? I... So correct me if I'm wrong, friends, but I don't really think so. Uh, Bloodborne... Jesus Christ! Um... Bloodborne didn't have any at all, um, not really, and Dark Souls 3 didn't have a ton, uh, I think Dark Souls 1 and 2 had more, uh, illusory walls than Dark Souls 3, on the whole, I want to say. Ah, no, wait, take it back, uh, the second DLC of Dark Souls 3 had a lot, the, the Ring City had a lot, a lot. I do, I do appreciate that there's loads and loads of little secrets to find, uh, but I don't like the fact that it seems like a lot of the really unique quality gear, weapons, things like that, not even the high quality stuff, I should say, sorry, just the unique stuff, is hidden behind secret doors and the like. Um, or in this case, something you need to complete, uh, I think even just the main quest line. Well, we could technically complete the game now, like get an ending, just not, you know, a good ending. See if we head to the uh, ateliers. MC says, asking because secret doors are a good thing to use sparingly. And they were probably leaning more heavily into the Metroid influences in like the Metroidvania style design these, ser these types of games tend to go for, and that's okay. It's just, uh, it's really different coming from something like Dark Souls that does use them so sparingly to something like this. Speaking of, that, that is not a secret door, that is just straight up a door. Here we go! This'll be one of them. There's apparently like three or four in the embassy. Oh, hello. Take that healing charge now, thanks. Oh, vipers. Nice. Original recipe vipers at that. And just some tool victims. Anything of quality in here, though? Maybe here? Carbon. Okay. Oh, damn. Oh, hell. Well, we, uh, we lost our Axians, I think. Good. Good, good. It's weird. Um, you don't take fall damage for quite some time in this game. You get, like, some solid distance before you take fall damage, but then there is a very narrow margin between taking some fall damage and just dying instantly. There's there's not, like, a kind of uh, height gradient like uh, the Soul series tends to use, where you just take more damage the farther you fall, broadly speaking. It's okay, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry, we're not playing super well right now, but we'll get there. A 
All of this we really need at this point, honestly, is uh this this suit. Yeah, it, MC says Dark Souls uses that and Death Planes. So true. I honestly have no earthly idea why these guys are made so difficult, seeing as they only appear in a couple places in the game, including this, the tutorial area. It's real weird. And they're technically mechanical, I want to say. MC says, I know why. Is it... Is it, I wonder, just because Dark Souls 1 had um, a Black Knight early on to, to intimidate players? They're made to be avoided when you see them first. Okay, well, that makes sense, but I mean, I guess unless they're going to be common enemies in the high ateliers or somewhere, they still feel a little, little weird. I know you can find their armor somewhere, I've just got no idea where. It's probably really good armor, though. Hold on, while we're here, can I can I use some of our super warrior armor? That would teach about running away. An important skill in this game, to be sure. Okay, what's our equip load now? Equip load is at I 74%. That ain't great. Um, so we'll just unequip that and instead wear the hostess mask. Why not? How about now? 66%. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, we got caught on the wires. That's totally fine. Oh, thank you, Seth. I appreciate the shout-out. Uh, we're probably just supposed to walk down on the side, aren't we? MC says, like, you meet them in the Arcology when you're ready to take them on. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Well, I'm doing great so far, so yes, please do join us. Our Discord is open to all. Oh, and thanks for joining us, Potato. Glad to have you. I swear I've died by fall damage uh, maybe three times as much in this game as I have to, like, everything else combined. Um, like, top causes of death for me so far are um, fall damage, and then just that, that one boss with the totally static uh, animation. I bet they're also pretty easy to parry, not that it would make a ton of difference right now. There we go. Do really want that armor. Well, I, I say that, but we can't. And she says, oh, and don't forget all the sensor stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay, so the guy with the sensor killed me way more times than the priest did. Um, or the, the god did. Nemundus. Nemundus is the name of the god that I keep forgetting. And, yeah, yeah, the, the Arisen, uh, congregators were absolutely horrible. But the, the rest of the game, and the bosses especially, have been largely really fair. And well designed, I would say, for the most part, given what the devs had to work with. Um, the, the boss that Exit and Seth saw yesterday was kind of mediocre, but that's about as bad as it gets otherwise. Generally, they've been pretty, pretty damn good. And again, the boss we fought last night, the, the Puppet Master, I thought was great, actually. It had very unique, uh, eccentric movement. Uh, its its uh, combat style resembled a dance more than anything else. Uh... It could spawn very weak enemies from its own body that serve to distract you and also give you more energy for uh, ranged weapons, like the death cube we used to slowly burn it to death, because um, it was a giant... Oh, of course, you could just walk straight down. It was a giant wooden puppet. Oh, man. Okay, we're, we're fine. We're fine. 
They really don't want you making it to the bottom of this hall, do they? That's what lets you know the good stuff is down here. And I checked, we cannot get the sensor as a weapon as badly as I want it. Frumsoft, for Elden Ring, get on that. Give me, like, a massive sensor I can swing around like a flail. One of my dreams shall come true. I saw this really good episode of the, uh, The Drawfee Show, um, a YouTube program where professional, um, I think artists, but also, like, animators get together and, like, uh, sketch a bunch of different stuff based on certain themes per episode, where, um, they were envisioning, uh, Dark Souls bosses as Disney characters and vice versa, and let me tell y'all, Dark Souls Bambi looks badass. Never thought I'd say that, but... It's the truth. Okay, so it's time for us to go on a spacewalk as quick as we can. We're also going to be taking radiation damage, because, you know, why not? There it is. Oh my god, oh my god. No oxygen. I know. I know. I... Seth says, Dark Souls Bambi kills your mama. Oh, trust me, looked like it would do. Oh, and MC, that's just... See, I was so happy thinking about, like, Dark Souls Bambi, and then, then I read that, and it's like, oh. Oh, may maybe the, the original Dark Souls designs are just fine, actually. Lord Gwyn, drawn as, like, a kooky Disney king, though, was also especially charming. Okay, so we got a broken Eva suit that we can convert into a properly functioning Eva suit back at the observatory. So let's hoof it over there and lash that together, and while we're at it, maybe use some of our axions to increase the power of Death Cube even further. Seeing as my, my number one boss fighting strategy at this point is just Death Cube. Hey, like, good to see you, man. Hope you've been having a good few days. MC says I asked a great question on Discord. <laughs> of course, referencing one of my favorite chapters in Hand of Fate. So glad to see everybody out, by the way. Uh, thank you all so much for dropping by and being a part of my stream. I'm so, so glad to have you all here uh, spending the afternoon with me. Or evening, as the case may be. So we could go on to the end game and talk to the author, but we ain't gonna do that, because we've got one more god to track down and, you know, totally not brutally murder in its, its own home. <laughs> Man, you know this Eva suit's going to be heavy as all get out. Once we enter Alma Mater, though, I think it should be a pretty straight shot to the boss, because, uh... Seth says your character is very rude. He comes to people's homes, kills their gods, just an overall nuisance. Well, Seth, he's practically a newborn. What what do you expect? He's, he's in like his terrible two days old. And he says, I mean, that is the plot of most games. Uh, to be fair, the gods we've killed so far have been an incredibly abusive god of cruelty and deceit. And then, like, some deep space nihilistic stoner who just sat up in the, the attic of a church doing absolutely nothing forever, so... We're, uh... It's not exactly like we're providing a public service, but we're not doing... We're not doing much to change the order of things around here, one way or the other. There we go. Now let's upgrade Death Cube. Make it a little stronger. 
Or can we instead upgrade the poker to make it a little stronger? Yeah, and that's that's probably the smarter thing to do. MC says, just your friendly neighborhood anarchist. We are we are doing a job, ostensibly. Okay, now let's whip together that Ava suit. Oh, and they're nice and cheap. Just a little bit of Encelium. That's nice. I mean, most of these crafting recipes are actually very cheap and accessible, which I, I dig. There's nowhere near as much grinding as I would expect in a game like this that incorporated a crafting system. So, never thought I'd say this, because crafting in games generally isn't my jam, but, uh... Kudos to them for implementing one that, at its absolute worst, is painless, but actually adds something kind of nice to the game. There we go. Oh yeah, and that's, that's real heavy, as you'd expect. Oh. Oof. Um, okay, so we don't really need our shield, and we don't really need our Hadron. And our equipment load is still ridiculously heavy. Um, okay, there's a couple different ways of doing this. Any way to increase equip load like this? And since says crafting in a game is often used as an alternative for shopping. Yeah, and here it, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Well... Hold on, do I need every component of the set? Like, there we go. This is enough to keep me alive in the vacuum of space, right? Of course. Let's head back to the Arcology underside. And Alma Mater is... Hold on. Where is it? Cordisa Dunes over there. Alma Mater's in the south. Right, okay. MC says you look like a baby in a big diaper. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of do, actually. <laughs> which which is fine. This is, this is Hellpoint. It's to be expected. But apparently, maybe we can get to the underside of the ring tower from here and use it to unlock uh, the second ring, which will allow us to access those black hole rooms probably on tomorrow's stream. Which reminds me, tomorrow's gonna have a, a couple pretty big streams probably throughout the day. One a bit earlier on, like afternoon, or in this case, like mid-evening to our friends in uh, Central Europe. Or, um... There we go. Another in, like, the, the mid to late evening, or, like, very late night infomercial hours to our, our friends in Central Europe. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, did I just miss all of this? Oh my god, I did. Oh, we got one of the artillery shields. That's nice, and heavy, and we can't use it because we are weak as all get out and have been using our same beaten stick from the tutorial this entire time, which is still our strongest weapon, somehow. Imagine that. Alright, Night Exit, thanks so much for stopping by, man. Hope you've enjoyed the stream, and uh, look forward to talking to you sometime soon. Get some rest, though, man. You, you've earned it. Oh! Oh, hi. Hey, a healing proficiency! That's the way. Alma Mater Atrium? Oh, I wish. I wish I could go back, but I can't. Nice, that's another charge for our um, health injection. There's also one more behind another secret door in the embassy, I think, but eh, we don't need that now. Oh, hello. Whoops, I meant to get the drop on you, not drop down to the floor. Did I just kick it? Oh my god, I did. I kicked a demon in the crotch and then cut it down. I am... I am so proud of myself right now. 
Asaph, imagine that. The kicks actually do damage in this game. I, that's really cool, actually. Maybe this is the airlock over here, or this will take us to the airlock. So it says, finally, damaging people by kicking them in the cojones. Yes! Yes! We can finally get the, the, the crotch kick deaths that we pined for so, so long in the, the Soulsborne series. MC says, makes me think of Hand of Fate 2's kicking finisher. That was a thing, wasn't it? Oh my god, and my kicks are powerful too. Did you see me kick that guy into the wall? Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh, oh man, what? I was about to say, what am I, what am I even using any other like weapon for? I'm sorry. I think this game may be better than Dark Souls now. Oh, another rail point yard. We don't need that. But we'll take it. Omnicube heater. That's going to be useful to have on when we're fighting Archons. And there's going to be plenty of those in Alma Mater, I can promise you that. Alright, time to head out into the, the emptiness of space. Like says, what's better than Dark Souls? Um, the fact that in this game, you can kill people by kicking them in the crotch so hard they go flying ten feet in the air. Now that, that is change you can believe in. Alright, here's the ready room. Now we finally get the title card, Arcology Underside. I'm actually really looking forward to this. Um, we can upgrade our healing proficiency. Yep, healing injection is just my favorite. Works perfectly fine. The devs have generally done really well with, like, general environment design, so I'm looking forward to seeing Irid Novo from the outside. And she says, yeah, yeah, Sparta, calm down. So, I had very mixed opinions on uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It was nice in some regards, but it was also a Ubisoft game, so it felt extremely repetitive uh, beyond uh, a certain point. Um, and almost like it didn't want you to enjoy it as much as you did. But I love the fact that there was an ability you could get early on called the Sparta Kick that would just send enemies flying through the air. And I, in fact, used it to kill several late-game bosses by just throwing them off of mountains and the like. Oh, no, no, we still take damage, we still take damage. We need to wear the whole suit, we need to wear the whole suit. Oh, oh no. Also, we probably need to equip the Omnicube Heater. Just to keep us nice and warm. And he says, I saw a little bit of that game. Yeah, it was alright. Hopefully there won't be any, enemy, any enemies out here, because if there are, we are screwed. What's our equip load at? 68%? That's fine. Is there a, like, smaller weapon we could use that isn't super heavy? Ozzy's hand might do. Yep, yep, this is a pretty standard issue NASA gear right here. We're ready for it. MC says, had a great discussion with a fellow game designer on it. He talked about the fact that the open world's pretty empty and lacks a key feature. That's actual world evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It U Ubisoft excels at their very pretty looking but utterly empty and indistinct um, open worlds. Okay, welcome to the exterior of Irid Novo. Oh, oh dear. Well, given how my my general track record with gravity in these games is, uh, expect a whole lot of deaths. And hold on, while we're out here, let's uh, throw in the, the black light over here. We're never unequipping our circus music. 
anything over there? Nope. This is the most intimidating area in the game for me so far, just the platforming is yikes. Also, if I end up having to defend myself, I'll have to use Ozzy's hand, which is a fine weapon. It's just not quite as ridiculous as our prod. Oh, and we're going to have to explore all of this, ain't we? Oh, yikes. Looks like we're building up practically no radiation thanks to the full suit, which is great. What do we have? Axions. Nice. Doof! Carbon. This is the bit where I would probably try singing a bit of Rocket Man, but would almost certainly get several minutes of my stream silenced if I actually attempted doing so. So there's no, like, lower gravity out here. I guess they've got really solid gravity around here. Pod asks, is there a thing like uh, Dark Souls where we could do co-op stuff? Yes, sir, there is. Um, I have seen these uh, blue handprints, like the types of messages players can leave behind for one another, around the station, and apparently they allow you to summon in help. Now, I don't know if that's other players or NPCs or what, but I think it's, it's, uh, it is, in fact, other members of the small but thriving Hellpoint community. Yes, he says, uh... Beyond people moving around, open world games never have a real sense of evolution. They don't change in the geometry regardless of the days passing. And I think that's why people have moved to games where you can modify geometry yourself. Uh, open worlds have added some of those features, but they feel stale in a story based uh, on evolution. Yeah, 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 they do. And also, like, there's very little to distinguish one area from the next aesthetically or in terms of quest or content. Unless you have an open world that's meticulously curated, like, say, Witcher 3's. Witcher 3 has some of the best design in modern history, I would argue, and just maybe my favorite game of all time. Oh, what is this? Hello. Oh, another airlock. Right on. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, uh, nothing? Oh, just a place to configure your stuff, I guess, if you wanted to? That's fair. Holy Moses, it's bright out here. NC says, I tried to get into Witcher 3, but disliked the gameplay heavily. Uh, my best friend had the same, the same experience. I really dig it, though, and I know I think Seth does as well. Um... Oh, hello. Hello, Big Daddy. I, I assume that's glass, and we're not just, like, dueling on a massive, like, uh, collision error. Seth says I love Witcher 3. Yeah, man, so do I. Like I said, probably my favorite game ever, maybe. I was really blown away with how much I enjoyed it. It's rare to see um, an open-world RPG with so many quests and characters and all that where everything you do feels really distinct. There doesn't feel like there's hardly any filler content. Everything's meticulously designed and curated. And uh, all of your choices, absolutely all of them, big and small, feel impactful in some way. It's masterful, masterful stuff. And I, I can't wait for Cyberpunk, just based on my experience with Witcher. Oh! No, not you. Not here. We are running, and we're running. Oh, 
Oh god, it's so bright. Why why are all the lighting effects so bright out here? Oh my god. Pot says, yeah, I've recently started uh, Witcher 3 playthrough. First impressions, awesome. Yeah, man, it's a it's a really good game. And oddly enough, for like the standards of a game like that, I would argue it gets even better the further in you go. Like the DLC in particular, Hearts of Stone and uh, Blood and Wine. Fan friggin-tastic. So does Dark Souls let you slap big daddies to death with the remains of a dead god? No, didn't think so. Oh god, this is nerve-wracking. To its credit, Dark Souls also doesn't make you do stuff like this. Oh, how the hell are we supposed to... Ah! I... I... Oh, lord. That's gonna take several years off my lifespan. Pot says they are streaming uh, Witcher 3, but scarcely not a lot of views for that. And Seth says, for a newborn, your character knows how to walk sexy. Yeah. yeah that, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that hip sway. Like, like, this spawn is confident. This spawn is fierce. This spawn is probably about to go flying off into the void of space because I missed time a jump or something. MC says this is Metroid content. Yeah. Oh, and Dance and Pot, I will, I've got very little in the way of signal boosting, but I'll be more than happy to help promote uh, your, your Witcher streams, because I think that's a game that definitely deserves some more love. Oh, shortcut? Shortcut? Come on, you know you want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Now, this is an area I will be doing... MC says I have a problem with this area, but only one. What's up? I'm noticing a couple problems, but they're largely minor. Oh, no problem, Pot. No problem. And MC says I don't see the gravity. Yeah, nor do I. But, oh, it looks like we're back inside now. And Oh, no. Uh... It, uh, it ain't accretion storm time, so I've, I've got no health boosts either. What, what in the world is this gonna be? Um, well, while we're out here, why don't we throw back on our disciple gear? Hot says boss time. Oh, love it. Let's, let's hope. The bosses have been... Well, one of the game's earliest bosses is one of the absolute worst I've ever seen in a Souls-like. But aside from that, on the whole, they've generally been pretty good. Um, so let's let's see where this falls. MC says no bag, mag boots not flying off. I, I guess we could explain it away by saying Irid Novo is fueled both by science and by, like, eldritch arcane energies. Um, at least some of which have to do with stasis, so I don't, I don't know. We are probably not beating this with a single um, healing item, but let's see what we got. The transporter. Oh, it's Venom! We already fought one of you. It's the Venomorph. Why, why on earth are you called the transporter? Were you used, like, to haul freight or something? If so, this place has even more issues than I thought. Oh, uh-oh, we shouldn't have blocked that because you get sent reeling every time you try to block something in this game uh, and it breaks your guard. Oh, hell, yeah. Wasn't expecting that, but okay, that was fine. Hey, Headbanger90, welcome to the stream. I think it's your, our first time seeing you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get this... Um, very easily next time around. Um, very, very easily.
we killed one of those uh, earlier on in the game. So, like, this game has a pretty clever use of assets where, like, certain mini-boss enemies will appear as regular enemies with greatly decreased stats later on, or sometimes vice versa. Um, and we ran into one of those earlier on and were able to deal with it quite easily, but that was without any of, like, the four healing items I should have now. So I, I couldn't expect much better, really. Okay, let's get inside, because we're out in the radiation and the cold. And it's awful. Oh, hey, ghost. My favorite two-hit combo. How do you like it? There we go. Let's uh, try that again. After we let the radiation status effect dissipate. Looks like it's sectioned off some of my health. Oh yeah, see, this is the kind of like support you can find. Health. I guess that's another player offering to to show us the way. Paras, was that an invasion? No, no, no. Um, every time you die, you generate, in addition to a pool of axions, like your souls you leave behind, that little like green spark in there, you generate a ghost. Um, a, a version or an enemy possessed of your build, arms, armor, all of that that you were using when you died, that uh, upon defeat will give you a nice little pool of axions and an extra charge of your healing item. And she says I take my spacewalk very seriously, so I feel disappointed. Oh, sorry about that. It's it's a tiny, tiny part of the game, but I can see what you, you mean, definitely. What is it going on with our health? That That makes me uneasy. Hold on. We'll cure radiation poisoning. Let's give this a shot. There we go. Well, I'm not going to have my, my full roster of healing items again, but it's okay. We'll give it another try. Oh, thanks for the follow, Headbanger. Really appreciate it, man. And Pot says, oh shit, so to get your souls back, you need to wreck yourself. Not exactly. No, our souls are right in there. Um, oh, I forgot to use Death Cube. Silly me. The, the fault is mine. Really. Okay, so it seems surprisingly resilient to Death Cube. Not a fan. Man, it's got the, the perfect arena for that moveset, doesn't it? Hi, hi. This is not going to be our run either because of the radiation poisoning. But we're, we're learning. Yep. Uh, shields in this game, generally speaking, are kind of useless except for magic attacks. Against magic attacks, which are really plentiful, they're really good. Um, you can block a lot of magic. Uh, really, really easily, uh, with, like, no cost to stamina or anything like that, um, with the shield I'm using right now. And it also blocks something like 65% of physical damage, which is... Seth says, for shield, for you, shields in any game are useless, hon. I mean, fair, fair, but, um, what I mean about Hellpoint is if your stamina breaks due to an enemy attack, which it does really easily, um, hold on. Hold on, I got this. We're, we're going back to the Eva outfit. I'm not doing this with radiation poisoning. That is not happening. There we go. And we're good. Oh, Pod, I hear you. I played through uh, Dark Souls 2, I want to say, with the Twin Dragon Great Shield. It was one of my favorites. NMC says games do shields bad? Some of them do. Some of them do, some don't. Well, if it wasn't weak to Death Cube 1, how will it feel about model number 2? Oh, 
Thank god, I thought the game was going to crash there for a second. Oh! Oh, sorry. Sorry, yo. Oh, did it just totally no-sell one of my attacks? That's unusual. Now we can get out of this damn thing, and probably into the warrior armor right now, because this is one of very few major bosses we've seen that doesn't have some kind of energy-based attack. I'd love to use the Thespian set, but it's actually too heavy for us. MC says bashing someone to death with a shield should always be a thing. And Pot says, like, going in duels of Dark Souls 3 with the door shield is a fun thing. Yes, it is. And, uh... The, uh... Gear that inspired that in Dark Souls 2, I want to say, is even stronger. What do we have? 74%? That's not great. Let's get us a slightly lighter headpiece. 68, that'll do. And we've actually got healing items this time around, so we should get this. Now, does Death Cube 2 have an associated um, status effect? If it doesn't, we might we might just be up a creek, but let's see what we can do. Could alternatively just drop the shield and kick it to death. Oh my, yeah, I dare say so. I'm sorry, is it whining like a baby? That is. That is upsetting. Oh, holy shit! It's not the boss, it's the arena! Because we, when we fought the first one, it was in a really big open area, and it was like, no problem. But here, it can just cross the entire uh, arena in, with a single combo, and I don't... I don't know if that's good or not. I really don't. I, everything I have in me tells me that MC says gotta stay in the center. No, that will not work. That will not work at all. Uh, because it's got so much range like, horizontal range on those swings that it will definitely clip us, no matter what. Um, it's, it's hitboxes, to be fair, both for making contact with us and for our attacks making contact with it, are pretty generous, it seems. Well, geez, guys, I'm sorry, I'm not doing super well, and I thought this would be a, an easy boss, like a real, a real walk of a boss fight, but... Oh, but the radiation poisoning remains, it would appear. Enzipot says, no worries, start a death counter. I I did do, like, squats for deaths uh, on, I want to say it was Champion Gundir on Dark Souls 3, so I get that. And Headbanger says, it's okay, I spent a few hours in bosses on Remastered. Really, what's giving you the most trouble so far? For me, uh... The, the one really definite wall I hit on my, my playthrough of Remastered was uh, the Four Kings. Running with a really good dex build, they're, they're the boss that's likeliest to just stop you straight up in your tracks. Okay, so this, this radiation poisoning, there's not gonna be a way to get rid of it, is there? And Banger says, oh no, I beat the game. Uh, what gave you the most trouble then? go back to our disciple set for now. And Death Cube Mark 1. 
because it was able to, at the very least, ignite it. Headbanger says the hardest was probably Ornstein's muff. Very, very common uh, experience. Yeah, and I can tell you, uh, golly Moses, my first playthrough, they took ages, ages. Not because of the mechanics, because the mobs in front of them. Yep, yep, exactly right. Let's go ahead and cure that radiation poisoning if we can. Alright, let's try this again. We finally found something we can't just burn to death. Well, easily, anyway. What the fuck? It's... It's the radiation poisoning. The radiation poisoning hits you almost immediately, and it, like, permanently drains your, uh, your health until you can, uh, or your max health until you take a hit, I think. That is, that is nasty. We've never seen that before, even against, uh, Nemundus, the god that uses radiation-based attacks. Oh, oh yeah, Headbangers, the, the, the four kings with Havel armor are really, really easy. Suffice to say, I was nowhere near that heavy. Okay, so right off the bat we've got something I generally don't like to see in games like this. Something that's difficult not because of the fight itself, but because of the area or the mechanics around it. Take care of this before we get rad poisoning. And we don't have much of it. Oh no. It's the cube model. See? When the computer uses one of the cubes, it has infinite ammo and can just ruin your day. Like so. God. Damn it. I am so sorry. We've been having a really smooth time, like, for the past couple of days, right up until about that. Yeah, never, never die with a cube in your hand, because your ghost will destroy you. Yeah, no, Pot, you've got it exactly. It's practically Dark Souls Remastered. The, the enemies are just fine, but the environment... Yep, 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 yep. Um... And a couple fights. And keep in mind, out of like well over a dozen bosses in the game, a couple fights have some, some balance issues, but that's about it. Let's try that again. I have no idea if there's, like, an invasion-esque mechanic or not. I've not seen anything like that so far. Why on earth is this thing called the transporter, though? I, that makes no sense to me. Well, let's, uh, let's psych ourselves up. There we go. Oh my god, its attacks just go straight through our shield. Um... That's new. Okay. So it's got clear telegraphs for each of its handful of attacks. Looks like Venom crossed with a Xenomorph, and by looks like, I mean that's pretty much exactly what it is. Oh, 
That's new. Got its claws stuck for a second there. Nice. Gotcha! Right? Oh, come on. There we are. Finally got the Porty Sadoon creds. Thank you, Headbanger. Appreciate it, man. Seth says, to be honest, the environment has so far helped me in Dark Souls Remastered. That's very true. She, uh, it's always the circus music. The circus music always does it for us. <laughs> um, she was able to get one boss to commit suicide, like just throw itself off of a bridge. And uh, several prominent enemies, and I think even a couple NPCs have done the same. It's like, Seth is so intimidating to the game that it just decides to beat itself. That's... That is impressive. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Took me much longer than it should have. I do apologize for that. But uh, we got we got quite a little haul from it. Uh, the marine rifle, so something we won't be using. It's like a standard energy weapon, I think. And the branch of light, a maybe a radiation-based weapon? Who knows? Let's have a look-see. Oh. Or is that something else entirely? Oh, we can't use the whalebone halberd? Oh, god, no, it's a strength weapon. Okay. There's your answer. Oh, no, no, headbanger, it wasn't that boss. And, uh, let's, let's be careful with, uh, Dark Souls 1 spoilers, uh, just for Seth's benefit, since she's running a fantastic blind playthrough over on her channel. Um, we're right at about Sin's Fortress right now. Fox says, I'll stop this, we're Dark Souls players, we know how boss fights go. I know, I'm just a ruthless perfectionist. From the original tree, one can choose another branch and set their own destiny. Use it as a breach for your own benefit, or... Oh, is this maybe how we do, uh... Oh, is it... Is it's ragdoll freaking out? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Its tongue is trying to get away. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is fantastic. The texture kind of reminds me of that really cheap plastic they would use for, like, lightsabers in Star Wars toys. So that says, oh no, not a strength weapon. We know how we feel about strength. Well, I mean, I mean, we know how I do. I think Exit might have converted you, but... Back to the observatory. Oh, we made it. Lovely. Wait, now is that everything we needed to do? Hold on, I do have a little, like, item checklist over here because this game is so sprawling. I want to make sure I get all the stuff we need to see. Watch, that's going to be, like, totally optional stuff. And what do you know? It is. Let me see. I, I think I've got that right. Yep, looks like it. Hold on. Gotta make sure I don't miss one thing. There's one thing we definitely need. I, uh... MC says this is the issue with ragdoll and extensible items. Yeah. And Pot says, well, I did one six-hour stream on Dark Souls 1. Blight Town made me quit it. Oh, my God. Yeah, Blight Town is the worst, man. It's, it's a really well-designed area, but... Designed to frustrate us, clearly. Seth handled it really, really well. Um... And that was with her, her commentary team just making an endless train of, of shit jokes the entire time. So, ah, there we go. That's the alma mater shortcut, I suppose. And we finally got a key to the gallery. Let's use that, and then we should be good to, to head back into the Arcology underside just long enough, just long enough, to uh, collect a credential, I think. Hold on. Is that right?
Oh dear. Okay, looks like we didn't need that for what I was going for at all. Um, oh, the, uh, the rather unfortunate, uh, stereotype character is, is here at this bonfire now, so we can advance his quest line, which we need to do, apparently. MC says I did Blight Town with no death. Yeah, that's really impressive, man. Uh, Headbanger says I got through Blight Town in like two hours. That's pretty normal, I think. Seth says, yeah, gravity helped me. Gravity's been our friend. And Headbanger says Crystal Forest is much worse, but it looks so pretty. It's it's visually one of the most stunning areas in the series. And Pot says it bugged me in endless falling mode. So when I got out, I just died. That was the last draw. Yeah. I can I can understand that. Okay, well, uh, we can do that. But we need to keep talking to you, so, you know. This place is so noisy? Oh, of, of course. I would love to see what my boss would have to say about this character. Um, let me see. I see people dancing. Yeah. Oh god, this is... Problematic is the polite term, but... Absolutely atrocious is the is the accurate term. Me and my boss were both ethno historians, and uh, oh golly gee, why why is there like a random Native American stereotype on an Eldritch space station like 600 years in the future? Why 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 is that a thing? NC says, just think of it this way: this is an alien. If, if only. Like, there, there's no explanation for why this guy's here, either. We should be able to access the gallery now, right? Oh, no, gallery's up. One level up. All right, thank you so much, Headbanger. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. NC says, and the stereotype is the eldritch thing. Yeah, maybe. Oh, God, that has me frightened for the final god. Which we are going to get to, I promise you. Just, uh... Got sidetracked several times. Galleries right over here. Bunch of axions. Model and material. So nothing great, but nice little supplies to have. Now let's not forget, I think we have just the one more god to fight, and then we're in the end game. Uh, well, the god and then the two eldritch, uh, uh, listen to me, eldritch archon knights. One of whom we need to align uh, the rings to access, and the other one I think is probably just going to be in Alma Mater somewhere, since that seems to be where they're all holed up. Transporter's not a great boss to go into, like, the end game on, now is it? Especially after several pretty good fights in a row. Let's, uh, make the prod even stronger, why not? Since it appears that the damage the Death Cubes deal is based entirely on, uh, how weak specific uh, characters are to their, there we go, to their damage type. Uh, we just want to increase the base damage of the prod as much as we can. All right, so we want to go back to the Central Mall of the Arcology Underside, because from here we could take the elevator back up to, um, back up to the alma mater atrium, and apparently there, from there, like right around the elevator, 
we can pick up the pass we need to access the ring tower. Alright, yep, right back we go. And our lift was in here. One second, let me make sure I've got the right area. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the atrium we've missed. Let me see. So from here, or no, there's like another section of the atrium we can only access from the archaeology underside, maybe? Yikes. Yeah, maybe that is it. Okay, so we're going to have to go back through the Arcology Underside, sorry, um, to reach another pathway that takes us around is, uh, or takes us back around to the Atrium, and from there we'll get the key we need to access the Ring Tower, and from there we can also fight, I think, um, another one of the Archons. Then we might, like, call it for the day, as I've got uh, one of those Zoom classes I have to attend in a little under an hour. But it has been so great having all of you with us this afternoon. Thank you all so, so much. Um, really enjoy talking with you, as ever. Okay, let's get our crap suit back on. If our equip load was higher, this would be really easy, but it ain't, so it won't be. Oh jeez, even the weapon's too heavy. Um, it is a, a pretty, pretty bulky weapon. Oh, the hatchet will do. The saber will do. Ozzy's hand is one of the lightest weapons we have, though, that's solid anyway. Oh, thank you very much, Pot. I appreciate it, man. And NC says, uh, the surprising thing about Dark Souls 1 is that an archer might just be the best build you can have when it comes to exploring and traversal. Uh, with a spare melee on secondary. Huh, I don't know. I've, I've actually never tried an archery build. I don't think they're, like, especially popular, but I, I could see your point, definitely. I am an extremely uh, stuck-in-my-ways dex uh, evangelist, so... And archery is technically a dex build. Okay. So, uh, here we are, back out into the void, armed with the power of carpal tunnel syndrome. Sync up with this breach. MC says, it's a tro slow traversal, but you can see the enemies ahead and kite them out. Oh no, yeah, that's the one thing I did use bows for pretty, pretty extensively in my very first Dark Souls playthrough. Making sure that, uh, I didn't get swarmed by enemies. 
In like Souls 2 and 3, there's just nothing you can really do about it. You're going to be fighting uh, hordes of enemies at a time at various points. Usually pretty weak enemies, but still. Alright, we wanted our heater on. Oh, you can uh, one-shot the blow dart snipers with uh, a bow? Didn't know that. Not surprising, though. They don't have a lot of health. Did you know, originally, they, they even, like, had a worked-up model and everything. You were supposed to be able to acquire their uh, blow dart to use as both a ranged weapon and, like, a little war pick at close range. They had, like, a small blade on the side. That would have been cool, and absolutely infuriating to face in PvP. Okay. see more of the big daddies walking around on the outside. We're probably going to have to go over there, unfortunately. Oh, were there two of you originally? My bad. God, he's got a blaster. That's not standard issue for maintenance workers, I hope. As he says, you also have headshots. That's right. Doing critical damage with the boat's really about aiming for the enemy's head. Very true. Uh, don't think it applies to all enemies, but a lot of them, certainly. Hoi! Hey, artillery. How are you? It's not exactly the best name for those things, is it? Just artillery. It's one step away from calling it robot. What? What? What the hell? Oh no! What? What happened? What is? Oh no! Oh no! Hellpoint! What have you done? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, we we died and good thing too. Holy Moses. Well, um that's a death I don't feel bad about. <laughs> Looks like the game just gave up the ghost. Goodness gracious. Damn y'all. Uh, that... Oh, we gotta clip that. Um... Well, I, I expect when you kill several gods, one right after the other, um, it can have some detrimental effects on reality. So uh, let's try that again. Oh. Okay, ghost, you're not bad, you're not bad. But can you kick? Like endlessly. No, you can't. Oh, got him with that backhand. Oh, this is a pathetic looking fight. Hold on. Come on, load up that, that inventory, don't, don't quit on me now. Yes, we'll be really heavy, but we'll, we'll need it. There we are. MC says that is an area that's not updating its drawing anymore, and a slap fight, hell yeah! And, well, we're actually armed, not just with large hands, but with the basic enemies of the area, uh, we fought Ozzy in. 
Seriously, these things would scuttle around on, like, the little tendrils and uh, shoot projectiles at you or just fling themselves at you. Really cool little enemies. Yeah, so that was a thing that happened on my stream today. Death by the environment just giving up. I'm gonna grow old walking across these catwalks. So, uh, yeah, so long as Elden Ring doesn't do that, I have a feeling it can't really disappoint. And he says, imagine. I've learned graphic programming for about five years now. Dude, that's impressive. I don't know that I've studied, like, my, my field of interest for that long. In fact, I know I haven't. Nowhere near, actually. Okay, so the trade-off is, these guys ain't too strong. I like your environment suit, though. Can I get yours? Can you, can you refer me to the retailer, at the very least? And he says, I know why this bug can happen, and the thing around it. I... I just want to, like, write it off as an act of God. Like, some... some greater force decided, Yeah, yeah, no, you ain't getting past this area today. those suckers out like there's no tomorrow. Not like I'm gonna- oh, hello! Okay. Time for my heart to rise right on up into my throat again! You sh you should never ever fall that far in a soul's like. It just, it feels wrong. It feels wrong. It feels like I've done something horrible. Well, something else horrible. You saw the transporter fight. That's, that's bad enough, but... Okay, what do we have around here? More catwalk. It's locked from the other side. Hey, that's something we ain't seen in a while. Oh, right. Heater, please. Well, let's worm our way around to it. Glad to see we've got so many apparently very, very dedicated lovers of technology. In, in the chat with us today. Okay, so from the transporter fight... We can still summon in help. That's nice. No, no, we don't want to do that now. There's got to be another another path, right? I could not uh like, master or find myself terribly engaged with any type of programming at any point. Um, just not really a techie guy. Which is weird, right, for somebody on this platform with a passion for, like, gaming and design, but I've, I've always been more into the aesthetic side of things. 
I can do a mean baseline quantitative analysis, though. Okay, so somehow... Follow, we gotta get, like, over there. MC says game design's not in programming aren't the same thing. Oh, I know, man. I know. Alright, let's, uh, let's pull up the old Great Hellpoint Atlas, just to make sure Brady knows what he's doing, because he doesn't. He certainly doesn't right now. Okay. Oh, we missed a lift in the room with the giant artillery. That makes sense. Huh. Oh god, the lightning effects are so bright! boss model of artillery, too. Yeah, it is. Or maybe we go up and then left? Ah! Good. Good. More of those. Yes. Yeah, more of them. All of them. Seth says, I like data. Anything graphical confuses the hell out of me. I... I do, like, or I guess my, my greatest passion in this realm is just, like, world building and encounter design. Which means I complain about them endlessly. That's that's what we mean by passion here. Hey, Encelium. Hey, another jukebox program. Well, you, you know we gotta try that out. Program E, right? And a bunch of, like, messages from backers and the like. These are all very cute. Hot says one to go with programming and didn't go as planned. So, just for context, I'm in, uh... In education, basically. I'm a grad student training to be um, a historian at the collegiate level, an ethno-historian, uh, and my undergrad's in political science, so I've got no idea what we're talking about when we start talking tech. I'm fascinated by all of it, but uh, to say I'm a neophyte is something of an understatement. Okay, head back to the breach, go into the building with small artillery. Okay. Oh, there's a platform here we can reach, too. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oop. That's more like it. Now where's this going to deposit us? Oh, just right back over there. historians, but very little. Yeah, we're a... First off, this jukebox is trash. Um, we're largely like a phenomenon in, like, um, the U.S. or studies of uh, indigenous uh, Americans, and uh, that's better. And uh, increasingly indigenous of the Pacific. Maybe this isn't small artillery. Maybe that's big boss artillery. Hot says I don't get that too. I'm just a fancy ass welder. Oh no, that's not only is that hard to master, man. 
That pays exceedingly well. I know I've got uh, several friends who were interested in the field when they were younger. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Lift. I probably totally missed. Huh. This may as well be my channel's theme music at this point. Nice, we might actually be able to wear that. We couldn't wear the major stuff because it's too heavy. Ooh, flip me. Nasty, nasty. I think is the pathway that eventually puts us uh, near the alma mater atrium. Pot says, well, it sort of happened. They say I have a hand for it, so now I'm doing new certification TIG wielding on stainless. Man, it feels good. Congratulations. Yeah. an item down there, but items do not tempt me right now. Getting the hell out of here does. And yeah, this is this is the one big complaint I have about the game. Is level design seems way too too large and kind of directionless. By large, the rest of it's either okay or great, though, so... That's the one thing I would caution prospective players against. all these like little axions more or less creating a path for us, I see. Ah! Very good, very good. Shortcut to the entrance and kind of a new path we can take from the entrance. I was kind of hoping that like the spacewalk segment would have you know, a boss fight against some kind of massive celestial uh, monster or something like that. Something akin to Fantoon from Metroid. Not just some mini-boss we already fought before. I'm not going over there because I value my life and my time, thank you very much. We are here for one specific purpose. We are on a mission. Pot says, sorry for saying this, but I would rip my dick off while in this labyrinth. Oh man, it's, it's, it, first off, never apologize. Secondly, I can, I can feel that this, this is not, a, it's a beautiful area, but it's not super fun to explore. And he says a butterfly in space, yeah, 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 okay, so this is still in the right area. Good. Good, that's great. Good. Oh, 
Christ. Oh wait, wait, what's that over there? No, that's just more of the exterior. Hold on, I'm on it, I'm on it, I've got my guide. Just in case, then it looks like we're going to need it. She says we're providing an interesting conversation to fill the emptiness of space. Well, something needs to. God almighty, this is... Not what we signed up for, to say the least. <laughs> oh! Oh, of course, good. Never mind. Screw it. Wow. This game, y'all. We're almost there, though. We were we were in the right area. And I, I've hit the point where we kind of don't really care about leveling up or anything like that. Hot says, well, what's Seth proposed to MC? The game crashed, so we defo doing something to space. I... Yeah, but is space doing anything for us? No, it ain't. Oh yeah, MC has a good point. I want to point out death by gravity in space. At the hell point, what more do you want me to say? It's hell point. It will kill you with gravity anywhere. And down we go. Gently, gently. So somewhere around here we can find a pathway, I think. Even, you know, if not straight away. Yeah, that ain't happening. Lots of these items are just going to be like little pools of axions anyway, so we're we're going on this in a whole lot. suit gives us solid armor in compensation for that massive weight. Looks like we might have to go around that way. Jeez. Yep. Oh, wow. And it just keeps going. And there's more artillery. close. Anything around here? Oh, yeah. The prying tool, which is, uh, just a crowbar. MC says, reminds me of another name, game, uh, Death Corps. That sounds kind of familiar. there. Almost home free. Just gotta run past this, uh, artillery. So I say. Ooh. We got hit by the radius there. Lovely. 
Short game about level traversal and speed running. Oh, nice. Very nice. Might be the kind of thing I'd have to check out later. Oh, no. Uh, hold on. Do we... Is this what we want to do? Yep. Okay. This is, this is really where we're at, huh? Well, let's give it our best. Not promising this is going to go smoothly. No, oh, of course. Oh, of course. MC says there was a railing back with the artillery guy. Okay, we'll try that this time. We will try that this time. And then, unfortunately, as my class starts before too long, I'll have to go get ready, you know, Zoom and all that. Thank you, Seth. Uh, always glad to see you. And uh, look forward to speaking to you sometime soon. Uh, we're, we're trying this one more time. Wait, wait, wait. Back over to regular artillery. Then up and over and around. And... MC says, Seth the Twitch bot. Yeah, I really do need to set up my own bot so you guys don't have to carry the weight for me. I appreciate you doing so, though. Y'all are the best. Oh, Christ. So I we can sort that out, just ping us when you have time. Will do, will do. I, I think I have somebody on deck who's willing to help me set up a basic bot for Discord and things like that, but thank you very much. My, my free time is more or less whenever I'm not in a class or meeting via Zoom. Um, or dealing with, like, a crisis. Like, I've been engaging in the weirdest email conversation with a student whose fundamental, very long-winded um, problem they're having is that, like, apparently uh, our weekly reading assignments for a class I'm assisting with, which is, like, maybe 15 pages, is apparently just too much. Uh, and it's like, I, I can sympathize, but I don't, I don't know what to do about that, you know? Like, there's not anything I can do. Uh, no! No, oh, god damn it! Oh, I hate this area. I hate this area. We're getting there. We are getting there, though. One more try. I got I got like 17 minutes before I absolutely have to leave, so Alright, Pot, that's I got you, man. And MC says making maintenance area with safety in mind is important. Yeah, really. Also, I, I appreciate the integration of a jump into a Souls-like game, but I don't really think I like the inclusion of straight-up platforming areas in the same. Not, not really. I mean, platforming wasn't fantastic in games like, say, Kingdom Hearts, so you know damn well it ain't gonna feel good in Souls-like. Speaking of platforming, I've also added uh, Mario Odyssey to my little short list, now that I can uh, capture from Twitch. 
Um, or that I can capture uh, using my capture card and broadcast directly to Twitch. I mean, because that is one of my favorite platformers of all time and easily one of my favorite Nintendo games the past 10 years. And I would love to share it all with you. Some absolutely phenomenal design went into that. And uh, games like that in Breath of the Wild are what we really need more of from Nintendo. Less of the rehash is a very simple formula we got during the uh, Wii and Wii U eras. So look forward to that probably sometime around the holidays. Oh god, the lighting effects are so bright! Okay, let's do this. It's a fire our way past all this. Okay, now there's apparently a mag rail near artillery. Oh yeah, literally right near it. Weirdest iframes in the world, but I'll take them. Uh. Um. Is there anything here? There's there's no secret walls around anywhere. Maybe just a place to get a reprieve from the artillery. Hot says that beam tanked so good. Oh, it did. It did. But oh golly Moses, it looks like. This might be the way to go. Let me make sure I've got this right. Oh no, we do have to clear that, that platforming section, unfortunately. We didn't have a shield. Oh well. Okay, this this can only end well. Apparently. We are going to have to make each of these jumps perfectly. Oh, fuck! Okay, well, we're going to have to do that tomorrow, I'm sorry to say. Uh, because god damn, this is a bad idea. And we need to do all of this in order to get back to the alma mater, uh, atrium properly. And get the creds we need to access the, the tower. Because uh, once we activate that tower properly, we can uh, dissipate most of the black hole doors, which will allow us to fight the final Archon Knight, um, who is behind the one in Son District. Uh, just getting there, getting to that tower, should uh, earn us an audience with the second one. Uh, thank you very much, Pot. Appreciate you. Thank you guys all so much for stopping by. And, uh, yeah, we will see you sometime tomorrow. Stay uh, tuned to our Discord to be kept up to date on our extremely hectic... Uh, streaming schedule. And MC says, this is why you don't make a platforming section with poor movement. Agreed! Um, but we'll get it. We will get it tomorrow. I promise you that. We will handle it together. Take care, folks. Bye-bye!